Welcome back to Introduction to Agroecology, Unit 9, on the effects of biotic factors, and this is part two. Uh, here's a picture. Um, we're going to start out by showing predation. Is, predation is, if you recall from a few slides back in the prior unit, where one organism will kill the other. In other words, it's going to eat this ladybug in this case, the, the uh, bee. Uh, here's another one, um, and this is uh, impala, I believe it is, or gazelle, and it got looks like a bobcat, but some kind of putty cat anyway, um, and it needs to eat too, so that's predation. And I guess I really don't have to say it, but it is a removal um, type. Um, Aleopathy. Um, here's an example of big berry manzanita, and it's what it does is if we remember aleopathy from the last um, unit that part part one of this unit i guess i should say um, that it's an example where a substance is given off by the organism in this tree it's that big berry manzanita and it gives uh, something off so in this case nothing's going to grow underneath it so underneath that slug, uh, shrub is called aleopic aleo aleopathic, I can't even speak right now, but it's going to keep growth of other things underneath it. Why does it want that? It wants all the nutrients that can get to itself. Um, in this case, the rain leaches that substance, and it lists those there, from the foliage into the ground, and that's how it gets out there in this case. Um, aleopathy like I said, it produces that compound that inhibits or stimulates or have some kind of a, a stimulatory impact on an organism. Um, it can be released into the atmosphere. We saw rainwater was how it got down in the example there. But there's um, tannins, terpenes, and alkaloids are some examples of that happening. Um, uh, when it's a release uh, mechanism, it washes off the leaves. It leaches out of dried leaves. Um, onto the soil. It volatizes from the leaves when it gets wet from the rainwater, or it can be discharged from the roots uh, in the case of some organisms. Um, um, weed effects, um, some of the weed effects for corn, um, there's a bitter grass. There's green beans that inhibit by lamb's quarter and red, wet, red root pigweed. Um, so that green beans will be affected by that. Corn will be affected by the bitter grass. And then quack grass, um, various crops including clover, barley, and alfalfa would be affected by quack grass. Uh, in other words, it would if quack grass was growing around it, those things would not grow around it. Um, some of the solutions for this, um, if you have those types of weeds in your crops, you could use cover crops. And if you have cover crops, it gives less chance of weeds to germinate, so there'd be fewer of them to worry about. You can use organic mulches, so that's uh, an addition that you put into your soil. Uh, and you can use crop control by the type of crop you put in there that might assist crops that may be intercropping where you plant two crops at the same time. Um, Cover crops, um, they're grown in fallow years is one example where you'd have one whole year where you wouldn't grow corn, soybeans, wheat, alfalfa, and you put in uh, the cover crop. Certainly it would protect from that soil erosion because in the past it used to be you just let it lay fallow. And of course then we found out with cover crops it actually has the nitrogen, so that's going to help and it's going to keep runoff from happening and all those other things too. It provides an organic matter because what you'll do is you'll grow that cover crop and then you'll just um, till it into the ground and you will have that for added organics to the soil. And then it's also because if you're doing that, it's going to improve the soil water retention uh, of that soil. Some of the examples of where we could use these broadleaf annuals for that, wheat, barley, sorghum, oats, rye, um, could also be used. Um, on organic mulches, it improves the soil quality. Well, any addition you have that's a mulch, the chatter from the crop from the year before, if you leave that on the uh, ground after you harvest, 
Um, by doing that, there's less of the soil showing, so there'd be less weed growth. Um, you can spread it between rows of crops if you have a mulch um, that would help. Probably wouldn't be real practical in a huge, huge field. It would be in the more organic settings. And then in some places, they use the cocoa pod hulls um, in order to create that organic mulch. In other words, it's just covering the soil, and then eventually it'll uh, deteriorate and it will become a good mulch for the soil. Uh, for crop control of weeds, it's used, um, you put in a crop so it will inhibit the weeds. Here's some examples of things that would help control that. You can do this intercropping, in other words, in between rows of crops, if you have a small enough area where you can do it. Uh, as in the case of uh, beets, corn, the peas, and the cucumbers. And then you could also plant the whole crop, which would be um, corn, wheat, oats, and barley are just examples of how you can control weeds just based on how they grow. And some of those get high enough. Um, the wheat and barley are close enough that they would uh, choke out the weeds. The corn gets tall enough where it chokes out the weeds eventually. And then for growth stimulation, um, there are some plants release substances that have a positive or stimulating effect on a plant around them. Uh, examples of that is chopped alfalfa added to soil will stimulate the growth of cucumbers, tobacco, and lettuce. And then wheat can be stimulated by a weed named corn cockle. So it's just some examples out there of what things you could do to stimulate growth without putting in some of the, say, man-made -man fertilizers. Um, and then in conclusion, Organisms, as we have learned through these last two unit, last two sections of the parts of the unit, is can have a positive or negative effect or even a neutral effect on each other, but they really have important impacts and they help each other out in the environment. Some to a, a, a positive way and is helpful, and other ways that you can get rid of stuff. Not all removal um, interferences are necessarily bad. Um, and then some of the challenges we have ahead is trying to find ways in that we can practically, more practically incorporate into the crop management that we have all these positive and negative um, influences that are out there. So what impact from biotics can we use that will help us to let us get away from <clears throat> the um, synthetic fertilizers and pesticides that we use? And here's an example of the attributions, a list of the attributions that we have.